Today I'm going to go over the process of creating custom 3D characters for your animation and visualizers. This is going to be a multi-part series where I show you how to create a character, add animations to your character, add hair, clothing, and other accessories, and finally build out a simple scene with your character and render it. In this part, we'll go over creating the character and adding an animation to them. To start off, we'll be using FaceGen. FaceGen allows us to create custom characters based on photos. All we need is two photos, one from the front and one from the side, and then FaceGen will generate a face morph and a set of textures for us that we can use in DAS Studio to turn the basic Genesis 8 model into our character. Once we have our two images, we want to upload them into FaceGen. Then FaceGen will prompt us to mark different points on the images, which it will use as guidelines to create the face morph and textures. Then we can check both options and click the Create from Photos button. After a little waiting, FaceGen has our morph ready. Now, if your morph looks a little weird or super distorted, try using different images. It sometimes takes a few tries to get a decent looking face morph. Now, in the export panel, we need to give our face morph a parameter name. This is the name of what it will be referred to in DAS Studio. We also need to make sure that the Genesis 8 model is selected. Then we can click the export button and it will save our face morph and textures in our DAS directory. Now, opening up DAS Studio, we first need to import our basic Genesis 8 model into the scene. The next step is to apply our face morph to this base model. To do this, we can go into the shaping tab and under head, we will find the slider for our face morph. Now we still need to add textures as well. We can do this by heading to the surfaces tab and then applying the corresponding texture maps for each surface. For the eye surfaces, I like to use my own texture maps because the ones from face gen usually don't turn out very good. I'll link the one I use in the description below. Lastly, we can also adjust the body shape of our character in the shaping tab. Now before exporting our character, we need to first save the scene. When it comes to exporting our character into Blender, we have two options. We can either use the DAS to Blender bridge or the Diffeomorphic plugin. I personally always use the Diffeomorphic plugin because it results in much better textures. You can watch this tutorial by Lucidman Studio that shows you how to quickly set it up. So once you have the Diffeomorphic plugin installed, you'll see an export to Blender option in the file menu. In Blender, we can import our model through the DAS importer add-on which is part of the Diffeomorphic plugin. Now we have our custom character in our scene and it is fully raked so we can pose it or animate it however we want. The only problem is that animating characters manually is very time consuming and challenging. Now there are several approaches we can take here. The first solution is using an animation library like Mixamo. We can export our current model as an FBX and import it into Mixamo using the upload character option. Then it will prompt us to add markers to our character. Once that is done, our character is ready and we can start adding animations to it. Once we have an animation we like, we can export the animation as an FBX and import it into our Blender file. Now, before we import our FBX file, we want to move the already existing character out of the way, but we don't want to delete it just yet. And you'll see why. So once we import our FBX with the animation, you'll notice that the textures look a little off. And that's because when we import our character from Mixamo, we no longer have the texture nodes that were applied previously. Luckily, there's an easy fix to this. We can simply link the materials from our old model to our new animated model. Now selecting the rig, you'll notice that the animation only runs for 40 frames. We can fix this by copying all the keyframes and duplicating them across the timeline to extend the animation. At this point, everything seems to look fine, except we have one big problem. We no longer have our character in A pose anymore. And on the surface, this may not seem like a big problem, except when you try to add clothing or any sort of accessory, you'll run into a ton of issues. We can fix this by moving all the keyframes up by a couple of frames, and then in pose mode, we can clear the location and rotation to give us our default A pose. And then we can add a keyframe for it. Now, if we play the animation, our character will go from A pose to our walk animation. Now, this approach is great if you just want a simple animation, but it can be very limited with how much you can do with it. For example, we have no way of animating the face since the rig has no face bones. This brings me to the next solution, which is using the Rig GNS plugin. Rig GNS allows us to add one or more Mixamo animations directly into Blender, and it gives us a rig with facial bones as well. So once we import our model from DAS using the DAS importer, we need to make sure that the rig is selected. Then in the Rig GNS tab, we need to convert the DAS rig to the meta rig by following the steps in the rig figure dropdown. Now to add Mixamo animations to our character, we first need to export the animation from Mixamo, but this time without the skin. Now in the Rig Genus tab, we can click on the Mixamo Importer button and then import the animation we had just saved. Then when we click the Bind button, it will bind the animation to our model. Also, it's important to note that even though we don't export the character from Mixamo, you need to make sure that the character you're previewing the animation on is the X block, because otherwise you might run into some weird issues with your mesh deforming. Now, if our animation seems to look fine, we can bake the animation to our model. Once again, we'll need to duplicate the frames to extend the animation and then make sure we have our A pose in the beginning. If you want to have even more control with animating, the best option for animating your character is to use motion capture. Now, if you have the funds, you can invest in Rococo Smart Suit. 
But if you're broke like me, Rococo also has a solution for us. Rococo's free AI motion capture. It allows you to take movements from a video and apply it to your character. Now, of course, it's not nearly as good as the suit, but it can be a great starting point. I'll make a separate video on using the AI mocap tool because it involves a lot more steps on getting started, but I'll link some resources for you to check out in the meantime. And that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. In the next part of the series, we'll cover how to add different hairstyles to our characters. Finally, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.